Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we talk about when children of light move away from God. We know of individuals who started out in God's church. We know of individuals who prayed at home among fellow believers. We know of sisters and brothers in Christ who decided to study and show that self-approved and ended up getting various degrees. But they got away from the one true God. They got away from him. And for some individuals, they never were with him. To have a relationship with the one true God is just what it is, a relationship. You are relating, you're communicating, you are active in that relationship. We can see that with men and women. We can see how when men and women communicate with one another, there is this connection. But when I stop talking to you, when I stop coming around you, when I don't even inquire of you, then we don't have a relationship. And some individuals, they could not see that, did not want to see it, did not want to take ownership of why they were no longer communicating with. Well, we have this sort of thing when it comes to the children of light who are now children of darkness who had moved away from the one true God. You see, there were those who had a conversation with the Lord that went something like, Lord, I want this to happen. Can you make it happen? And some of you all, you can fill in the blanks. I want this to happen. Can you make it happen, O Heavenly Father? And so you may have even went and talked to some people and said, can you pray for me? And those individuals prayed. And the next thing you know, good things happened. But then what happened? There was the distraction that showed up and now there's no time for the Lord and I don't read the word and I don't have time to be around believers and and so many other negative things happen along the way. The woman or man who was singing in the church, let's use that as an example. I've seen this time and time again. They grew up in the church. They know scripture. They sang in the church. Went from... Oh, Heavenly Father, I love you. (laughs) Two, can I lay you down and rub you down? Mm. We hear, though, that these journeys take these people toward drugs and alcohol. These journeys away from the Lord turns them into individuals who don't reason like they used to reason with wisdom and truth and love and light. Instead, the enemy takes them on this path of darkness and destruction, hate and anger, bitterness, resentment, jealousy and conceit, divorces, cheating, lying, stealing, And some of you all know the rest. And then they get to a certain point in their lives where they go, you know what? I don't look as good as I used to look. I don't sound as good as I used to sound. I don't have the connections that I used to have. I guess I'm going to go back to my roots. Hmm. They go back. But you see, sometimes when you go back, it's not the way that you once knew. You don't have the mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and the cousins and those to keep you on point there. You don't have the people who are putting wisdom in your mind and your body and your spirit through our Heavenly Father. Instead, you're going back to headstones. Instead, you're going back to people who, I don't know you. You're going back to individuals that they got their share of issues because they too ran away from the one true God. There's rebellion saints as well as sinners that has showed up in the lives 
of those who were once children of light who are now children of darkness. Rebellion. And when one is rebellious, he or she is not listening to you no matter what you tell him or her. You're going to die if you continue to do this. I don't care. I've been doing this for years. But yet you want God to help you through. You can't even devote enough time to the one true God to ask him to remove some things. You're not willing to do the hard work to let go of some things. But yet you want to come back here and you want somebody to help you. Some folks, they know that we've gone through our share of challenges over the years and they're telling what people have put in their minds that they think that when you show up, you're going to be a problem. They think that when you show up, that you're going to be that group that, oh, or that individual that, oh, you're going to need our assistance. For some of you all, you've had to spend some time convincing some people that I didn't come back into your life to take from you, to steal, to do any of it. I know that's what I did back in the day, but I'm not doing it now. All I want you to do is recognize the new me. I'm older now. I'm not (laughs) that person that once was. But you know, some people, they have trouble. They have trouble receiving this new you because they're still caught up in the past. And if you are that one that you're talking out of two sides of your mouth and you say that you've changed, but yet evidence shows that you haven't, well, you're not going to win anyone's trust. Going back to the roots, for some individuals, they need to go back, but for a limited amount of time. And when they go back, they're not to go back to the people who they used to run with, who got them addicted or helped them with the addiction. Hmm. They're not supposed to go back and be down there in the old hood. They're not supposed to be, can I get, can I take from, can you hook me up? Let me argue with you about stuff that you owe me. You know, when you're going back, there's this temporal period of going back to maybe solve some issues, maybe apologize. There may be a time to go back to just see what God is doing with your enemy. Hmm. Your enemy thinks that you're coming into town to sit at his or her feet. Meanwhile, God says, no, I want you to get front row seats to see what I'm going to do to your enemy. Because that happens too. That's the side of God that many people don't like to talk about or think about. Don't want to read about in the Old Testament. But he's there and he's still doing that. Because some individuals, that's what it takes for you to understand that this isn't just for your viewing. Not for personal pleasure or anything like that. But that's because if you cross me, if you think for one minute that you can be disobedient and rebellious, I will do the same to you. So you're getting front row seats not to sit back and go, ha ha, (laughs) right? God got him. No, you're there to see that if you don't want this to happen to you in the future, you better stay close to the one true God. You see, when we were younger and they didn't like us (laughs) at times when we were saying things like, This is the day that the Lord has made, you know, oh, you know, that spiritual music, that Christian music or whatever else. And they didn't like us when we would say things about God and Jesus and Holy Spirit. And they didn't like us when we said things like, could we go to church? How come we don't go to church? And then as we got older and we started connecting the dots, the Lord showed us that you You are around rebellious individuals. Watch what I do. Watch what, watch what the items, the things that they put in their bodies that they ingest. Watch what that does to them. It's not enough for God to say anything. Oh no, the doctors and close friends and relatives and so forth were saying things and they still were rebellious. And some of you all, you've been so warned. And yet you still got an excuse. There was an article that I read on BibleReasons.com. The but we're all sinners excuse does not justify living in darkness. Some of them say we all going to die from something. Oh, okay. You didn't stick around to see that God was going to bring some folks back to you. 
if you would have stuck around long enough, that you didn't stick around long enough to see the rewards, the accolades. You know, some of you all going to cemeteries, talking to headstones. Rebellion. Rebellion. But we're all sinners. But that doesn't mean that you're supposed to go out there and get back into the lifestyle of the rich and famous where you're idolizing money again. Then you go back because you needed to clear your head. And then the people of God pray for you. Now you're going back into that atmosphere that you claim that you were not going to go back to. Many, many individuals in the entertainment industry. That's what their intention is. That's what some of them have already done. Oh, you were so spiritually minded and you were so caught up in whatever. When things were down. And you had a break. And now that things are on the rise back up again. Yeah, uh-huh. Spiritually minded. No earthly good. Mm-hmm. Now you're back to, oh, yeah, I got to do this for the establishment. And, oh, I love the industry because the industry loves me until the industry don't love you anymore. Until you have those negative words with somebody who signs your check. See, Lord Jesus, I'm coming where some individuals are. I told some of you all years ago, I said that there are those who are in these industries who are part of all sorts of associations and affiliations that come through on this channel. And they're wanting an uplift. They want encouragement. They want all sorts of things from the one true God. And when they are on that path with the one true God and they're healing they haven't been healed completely yet, but they're healing. They start going down the left-hand path again. Aren't you all cleaned up? Aren't you ready to, you know, face your foe and get away from that? You realize that's not what God had called you to, and now you're back again? Except this time, though, the Lord says, I'm going to make an example out of you. That's something that somebody doesn't want to hear today. I'm going to make an example out of you. It's like the parent who says, how many times I told you not to go over there? How many times did I tell you that you are not at the age in order to do A, B, and C, and yet that child continues to do? Now we're going to turn up the heat. You're going to end up getting things taken out of your room. You're going to end up not being allowed to go places any longer. You're going to end up not being able to have your phone, have your gaming, have everything that's up in that room that you didn't pay for, you see, because you didn't believe me when I told you that if you continue to do these things, this is what was going to happen. See, God is like that with us. That child of light who decides to go down that wayward path towards destruction. You about to get a butt whooping that you've never had. That you've never experienced. You thought, oh, the butt whooping from when you were a child. That's nothing compared to what God does. And I told my kids, I said, it's not the kind of butt whipping that you think in your mind that God puts upon you. It's another kind of butt whipping. Well, money ain't right. Come on. Some of us who were rebellious. Where relationships aren't right. Where locations not right. It just seems like nothing is going right. Lord, what will you have me to do? That's the prayer for somebody. What will you have me to do? Because see, I've already been back to my roots and some of you all I've already been down the left hand path I've already been down the right hand path I mean what journey am I on right now where am I supposed to go what am I supposed to do oh heavenly father and that's where he wants you to be asking him you already asked mama and daddy and sister and brother you already asked the professor the counselor you see you already asked the educator you asked the best friend you ask the neighbor, you ask the stranger on the street, and everybody's giving you all sorts of information. But God says, when will you ask me? Oh, Lord, where, where's my next job? That's been a prayer of mine. Where's my next job? I know I already prayed for a job, got that one, but where's my next one? <laughs> you see? Because sometimes you're only there at establishments for a limited amount of time. This is for someone. God will put you on a journey where it's not about being there around the children of darkness all day, every day. But he got a plan for you to be somewhere where there's also going to be 
not only children of darkness, but children of light as well. And that there's a mission in serving both. Lord Jesus, sometimes it's not about the church because he has the minister title. Sometimes he's the minister, but he's out there and he's preaching and teaching in places that folks would never have thought in a thousand years. You see, we can't put limitations on the one true God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you can't continue to put limitations on the one true God and say that he only operates in this realm when he does a 180 on you. And the next thing you know, you got people telling you, oh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I don't know where you got your information, but God, he has a lot of ways that he works through people. OK, <laughs> he is a mysterious God. You see. The rebellious has a time period of acting rebellious. A time period where they're up and then they're down. A time period where they're used and abused. A time period where, no, you're no longer number one. No, you don't continue to receive all of the money and their recognition and so forth. A time where they can be their own worst enemy and now nobody really wants to deal with you. You're too hard to work with. That incident, uh, incident that you were a part of, well, I'm sorry. There's no room for you here any longer. We have disconnected from you. Maybe you need a time out. Maybe that mental health illness is taking the best of you. Why don't you take some time to heal, to grow, to get the help that you need? Sometimes some individuals, they're not receiving what they've always wanted to receive because God has set you apart and set you out because you were vain. You were conceited. You were prideful. You were too busy talking about how great and wonderful and sweet and whatever else you are. And people were like, mm hmm. Yeah. OK. And then God says, yes, mm, this one is full of sin. We're going to have to put you in front of everybody. So that. Individuals will learn. That that pride, mm -mm. that pride, it comes before a fall. It's not a good look on you. No matter how pretty you dress, no matter who you know, no matter what car you drive. Somebody says, now I get it. Now I realize why, I, why I'm not doing so well. Some folks, they already know it. They're just not willing to walk with the one true God because they know that they've got to give up a lot. In order to walk with the one true God. I say take baby steps. Every day give up at least one thing. That you know. God doesn't want you to have. It starts with cleaning up the closets. And cleaning up the room. Cleaning up the car. Cleaning up your connections. Associations with certain people. It moves on to. Getting into the word and understanding and learning and growing in God's word. Praying, having a connection, a communication, if you will, with the one true God. And then in time, you start to notice a difference. As I said in another audio, you don't age so poorly <laughs> as, you walk, as you walk with the one true God. There are many ways to live in rebellion. Such as living a lifestyle of sin, refusing God's calling. Oh, as quiet as it's kept. Everybody who had a beautiful voice and was extremely talented was not called to be out there in secular world with that voice. The reason why some individuals got the kind of audiences that they got wasn't because of the lyrical content, but it was the spirit of the one true God that still has a way of coming out through a vocalist and the riffs and the runs and so on and so forth. That's how some of them got so huge because we heard the gospel sound. But then after a while, God says, you're not going to continue to use my voice that I gave you to talk about everything but what I want you to talk about. The world rewards people for being rebellious. They get tricks and treats for being rebellious. And they go, those that are children of light turn darkness go, there's no money in being a child of light. 
So I'm going to go over here and be a child of darkness. But I beg to differ because we see example after example of children of light who they may not be as rich as some of the most secular artists out there, but they're sure getting their daily bread. Come on. <laughs> There are many ways to live in rebellion, such as living a lifestyle of sin, refusing God's calling, trusting ourselves rather than trusting in the Lord. Time and time again on this channel, I've talked about trust on the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's Bible. But you know what some individuals do? They don't want to do any of that. They just say, I am God. I don't need to look to an external source in order to complete me. I got this. Hmm. You got this. Your addiction got you. Can we start calling out some addictions? The addiction to gambling, the addiction to drugs, the addiction to sex, the addiction to food. Oh, but you got this, right? Hmm. Okay. The addiction to, I got to have somebody around me. I, I just, I can't stand quiet. I can't be alone. Hmm. Addiction to spending money. Every time you get some money, I got to buy something. I got to get somebody something. I got to, and don't want to get to the root cause. You want to go back to your roots, all right. Go see people. But you don't want to get to the root cause as to why you do what you do. Because it's too hurtful. Because I'm not ready for that. Because just leave me alone. Don't judge me. Nobody's judging you. We're telling you that you're about to go down a path that's going to this time cause God himself to make an example out of you. Are you ready for that? Some of us, we've been made examples of time and time again to the point where I'm almost desensitized to it. I mean, <laughs> it's like I can't do, I can't. I can't participate in a worldly sort of mindset and go out here and do whatever because there's always going to be something that the Lord says, uh-huh, and I guess this is what you want to do, right? You do know that there was a lot of pain. There was loss involved when you did these things. Remember that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Sometimes that's more than enough motivation to say, I think I'll just stay over here in my corner. I know you will. Because sometimes the world is out there to send you back to your roots, to send you back to the industry that you were trying to get away from, to send you back to just about anything that is dishonest, sinful, you know, rebellious. Because the supports, that's what they do. And misery loves company. I'm miserable, you're miserable, so let's all, you know, just hang out and have a good old time together. Smoke this, drink this, do whatever, you see. Some people want you to go into atmospheres because it's good for them. And they figure because it's good for them, it must be good for you. Some things that have been traditional in family settings, for instance, like holiday gatherings and funeral uh, gatherings. And let's see what else is traditional, right? Some of you all, you can list a whole bunch of traditions. And so typically the world would say, that's good that you guys get together. And that's good, you know, that you're there to view the deceased out of, you know, funeral home or whatever. Oh, that's all good. Until it's not. It's until it's not. Every tradition isn't for everybody. Somebody needs to write that and let that be your motivation for getting out of that matrix, if you will, of tradition. Every family tradition is not good for everyone. I took the time out to explain some things not that long ago. And when I did, it can be difficult for individuals to receive what you're on. Come on, who you are. There's many a relative that doesn't, they don't know that I'm a certified Sunday school teacher. It wasn't for them to know. Simply put, weren't you the one that was portioned back when my relatives were saying, oh, yes, yeah, she's into God. She loved the Lord. She prays, you know, things like that. Oh, mm. yeah, that was boring, right? That wasn't your cup of tea. Oh, she's a plain Jane or she's a, you know how people formulate all sorts of judgments about you. Oh, believer. 
holy roller, zealot. And the Lord was there and heard individuals, whether they said it out loud or whether they felt a certain kind of way within. And so what happens when one falls by the wayside who was quite critical of the believer? They want prayer. They want somebody to come to the rescue. Some of them who, when they were doing so well, didn't understand how we fell from grace. They didn't understand why we were trying to keep our head above water because they didn't know the whole picture, the whole story, because it wasn't a good look for some individuals to tell our whole story. Because, you know, some people live vicariously through you, through your successes. So they don't tell individuals everything. I'm not going to tell you that my daughter suffers from panic anxiety attacks. I'm not going to tell you that she's had her share of setbacks mentally. I'm not going to tell you that. All I'm going to do is tell you that she is very smart and gifted and I'm so proud of her. So then when we do some things that are non-traditional, they don't understand. Why aren't you showing up at the family holiday event? Why is it that you aren't there for relatives who have gone on? How come you don't talk to this person and that one? Because see, they had nothing but positive things to say. The devil has nothing but positive things to say about God. (laughs) That's why when people tell me things like that, I go, yeah, okay. I'm glad. What? I'm supposed to feel bad about that because I'm telling you the truth. Oh, you know, because so-and-so said such wonderful, great, kind words, therefore you shouldn't say anything negative whatsoever. But I'm going to speak truth because people need to hear truth. This is the problem with this world that we live in. It's too many liars. It's too many rebellious people. Can I tell you rebellious people tell lies? They will hide their rebellion. They will act like they are a sheep when they're really nothing more than what? A wolf in sheep's clothing. They will say that they love the Lord. They will say that they praise and worship the one true God. And the Lord says, no, you praise and worship yourself. You've been doing that for many years. So now I've got to bring you down low. The issue wasn't about money. The issue wasn't about opportunity. Uh Uh-oh, I'm coming where somebody is. The issue wasn't about power. The issue was about the fact that you are a child of God. That fell by the wayside. And you don't teach your children or your grandchildren to reverence an almighty God. You don't just say Jesus. I heard that plenty of times growing up. Jesus loves you. Oh, Jesus. I'm a child of God. I believe in Jesus. You know, and all this other stuff. But then when you looked at them a little closer, these people who would speak these sorts of things, you found out that they weren't really believers. They just like to say that. Because true believers, (laughs) you don't even have to say anything like that. Your presence alone, come on, is what gets the atmosphere stirred up. It's what causes people to suddenly at a family holiday event go, you know what, Um, I got to go. You just got here. Yeah, but I got to take care of the babies. You see what I mean? Or I got to go to work. Have you ever been in a room full of believers? Then how can you call yourself a child of God? What do you mean? Usually on this journey, you do end up with an experience or two of being around a bunch of believers. Oh, oh, and you don't have any problem being around those believers when they're right, when they're, when they're with the one true God, like they're supposed to, but when they're not with the one true God, like they're supposed to, don't you have problems? Mm, come on, say that's right. <laughs> 
You got all sorts of issues that arise. You got past issues. You got present issues. You got future issues. You got people who you call yourself a Christian. You see, you got people who don't like you for any number of reasons. And some of which they can't even name. I don't know. I just don't like you. When we're in a room full of unbelievers, it's not easy. No more than it is around believers at times. Who don't want to know that they're who don't want you to know that they're struggling with all sorts of issues because we get the believer who shows up and says, mm, I love the Lord. I, I care for him. I, you know, whatever. But then at the same time, though, they got one foot in the world. And the world is winning. So they're trusting themselves. Rather than trusting in the Lord. Once a child of light. Now a child of darkness. They're also being unforgiving. And there's so much more that they're doing. Why oh why. You who grew up in the church. You who know the one true God. You who read scriptures. You who. You're a walking miracle in and of yourself. And yet. You don't want. No parts of God or the people of God? Does that make any sense? Because you do know the people of God are going to be on the other side. You who claim that you want to go to heaven. (laughs) So if you can't get along with the children of light above ground while you're breathing, then what makes you think that you're going to be able to get along with them in heaven? There's no place for the rebellious. There's no place for the rebellious in God's kingdom. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. We must continue to examine our lives in the light of scripture, according to Bible, uh, according to Bible reasons dot com. We're to repent. Right. Repent of your sins. I've said this over and over again. We confess sin. Right. And we repent. That means that once I have confessed a sin that I know that the Lord spoke to me about, I've got to keep fighting that thing. I've got to turn away from it. I'm not supposed to say, yes, I confess sin and then go along and do whatever. No, if I'm confessing sin and repenting, that is it. Period. There is no, I'm going to continue to go out here, steal, kill, lie, act up. Be manipulative and do all these other things. Trust in the Lord and align your will with his will. I got to align my will with the one true God. So how do I do that? I go to him. I say, Lord Jesus, what is your will for my life? Because I've already tried. I've done my will. My will, (laughs) you know, it's embarrassing. It's shameful. It's the kind of thing that. You know, parents aren't proud of, right? And the Lord goes, okay. And they're still not going to be proud of if they're not walking with the one true God. That's the real truth for some of you all. Because see, you can start walking the way God wants you to walk and you're not going to win those who may claim to be believers, but really are not. Or those who, yeah, I am a believer, but not like you. Or those who, I'm rebellious, and I mean, I haven't been about God's business in a long time. Because as you are growing and maturing in Christ, you can't bring everybody along. I've said this in other audio. As I was growing, as I was maturing in Christ, and maybe that's what I need to start explaining to some individuals is that this wasn't just about, oh, you just stop talking to people because, oh, you are unforgiving or something else that they came up with. Oh, no, no, no. That's what you came up with. That's your you stop talking because let me tell you, at the end of the day, when God gets a hold of you. If you're in the right, you are going to let go of wrong people. It doesn't matter what their title is is I have a job that I have to do. I have to move forward. I have to be the kind of person that God wants me to be. And sometimes that means that you got to turn your back on your mama and on your daddy. That means that sometimes you got to turn your back on those that turn their back on you. Oh, I see where this is going. So what they do is they call themselves cutting you off before you cut them off. You see, some individuals, they know that their atmospheres weren't good atmospheres. 
Some were so upset and so mad that they had to explain for you. And meanwhile, nobody said that you had to explain anything. Matter of fact, you could have just gave them my phone number and I could have explained myself, you see. But rebellious people who are just angry about many different things, rebellious people who were at one point feeding off of you, but no longer rebellious people who never really liked you, never really liked the God that you serve, felt like that God, you know, he's not even there. I mean, I went through abuses and I, I went through a lot of issues and I mean, I don't even know why people bother with him. They're not going to receive you. They didn't receive Jesus and Jesus was healing people. Jesus was breaking bread and (laughs) feeding folk. And they still, there were those that still had issue with him. Even one who was close to him, Judas. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would have all been destroyed. He took all of our sins. You hear me? All of them on his back so that we might be saved. Trust in the Lord and align your will with his will. Somebody do that. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life daily. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, well, that's going to be a problem because you got to do that in order to receive The Holy Spirit comes as a comforter. The Holy Spirit comes as a teacher. The Holy Spirit comes to remind us of our Heavenly Father and His Son who died on the cross. And when these sorts of things are taking place in people's lives where I ain't got time for no God, I'm going to go ahead on and do me and whatever else, then when you fall by the sword, right? Don't sit around talking about, can somebody take this sword? Because remember, you're your own God. How about you take your body off that sword? Oh, that's right. You can't do that. You're not Jesus. If you're your own God, then somebody can do something very harmful, very vicious to you. And you die. So then come back to life. Oh, that's right. You're not Jesus. If you can operate without a savior, then you should be able to heal. Like if I, you know, reach out to you and I say, I've got an illness. It's a really bad illness. Then, you know, you should be able to just take it away. You see, we don't have those kind of people that can do these sorts of things. We don't. We need a savior. We need a savior. And so this is why you get some of these individuals that will go back to the church. They'll go back to the church and they'll feel all emotional. And they'll go back to singing some spiritual songs. You see. And it and the thing is, is that they don't have that Holy Spirit anointing they got to get cleaned up before they go in front of a mic they got to do right by the one true God they got to live holy you might move a few people but not like that one who comes along and their Holy Spirit filled And there's people that get healed. They get saved, sanctified. (laughs) God turns their lives around. The rebellious will go back. And they'll talk about, I need need, uh, some assistance. Oh, you spent up all your money at the wild parties. They're like the prodigal son, right? Oh, please. Oh, please. I need your help where men and women will turn their back on you. When you go back to him, God, he'll open up his door. And he will even move on a man or woman's heart to open up their door for you. God 
God is a good God. So many people don't recognize the rebellion they're in. Because they've been in it for so long. And so when somebody like myself comes along and says that what you're doing is destroying your life. They will either go, I'm going to stop or they're going to say, I've been like this and I don't plan on changing. And you can go ahead on it. Matter of fact, what about you? Right. (laughs) First Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. So if there's the pushback and there's and there's the rejection of what I'm saying today. Well, I got scripture right here that says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. There's some individuals who they want to be in a leadership role. They want blessings to overflow. They want healing. Some folks, they want to go and be with Jesus a little sooner rather than later. I mean, there's so many different things that people privately pray about. Okay. Well, then if you want all these things to happen, then why are you rejecting the word of the Lord? Why are you rejecting wisdom? Why are you having and coming up with all sorts of excuses? Why are you so busy worrying about the speaker when you should be concerned about your soul? Evil people are eager for rebellion. Proverbs 17, 11, evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. Let me tell you, some individuals went out here and they listened to whatever media told them to do. Okay, and I don't care what it is, because at this point, there's so many different things that people have been doing. And one one subject, it doesn't explain every subject. There's so many different things that rebellious people are doing. And they're saying that God told them to do some things. Okay, and I shiver at times because I say God did not. But all right, that's your personal opinion, your thought. What they didn't realize is that they were so trusting And I've been preaching for a long time on and off about gullible, being gullible, right? And some of you all, you thought, well, it's just related to family issues or friends, right? Don't be gullible, you know, don't be used and abused and stuff. But it was bigger than that. And at times, every now and again, I would give you a national or international message to kind of, you know, bring some things home for you a bit on where societies, secret and otherwise, were taking us. These evil people, these evil people are the ones that um, are eager for rebellion and they want people to join them. Okay, they want people to be a part of the process. They want people to uh, give them results, give them some feedback, give them some study, some observation, do some things so that we can take a look and see if what we are doing is working or not working. Okay. When you are an individual who you just want peace, but yet you're surrounded by evil, evil is going to figure out ways to keep you right where you are with them. Evil is going to figure out ways to keep the money right where they are to keep your body, your mind, your spirit right where they are. But when you start getting enlightened, when children of light surround you and start giving you truth, evil rises up and says, don't believe. Misinformation, controversial, That's a lie. I mean, evil people will accuse other people of being liars when they're liars, you see. So you've got these folks that are eager for you to turn away from the one true God, eager for eager for you to turn away from the truth. They already got some individuals in a mindset where no matter what we say to them, they can't receive the truth. Even if the evidence is there that this isn't good for you and going over here is not a good place and being a part of this association and, you know, doing what this group tells you is not good. They got them so buffalo, so screwed up, so messed up to the point where you don't know what you're talking about and we need to just get rid of you. 
Okay? Fights in families. People who used to be close, no longer close. That's okay. We're here, evil people says. <laughs> We're here. And so off the rebellious goes. Down that rabbit hole. Some were tools through their sinful ways. And because of their iniquity suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food. And they drew near to the gates of death. That's Psalm 107, 17 and 18. That's where some folks are headed. They're going to the gates of death. The Lord reminds us after all of this. <laughs> Luke six forty six. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? But you told me, God says, I did not tell you. And now all of these problems have come upon you. Have you ever done something that somebody specifically told you don't do it and you went on and you did it anyway and now you're paying the consequences? Or you trusted in a relative, their advice, their counsel, and then you forgot, oh my goodness, that's right. You're a rebellious, you're a rebellious fool and I didn't listen to you. And now I'm caught under your foolishness when I should have been listening to the one true God. You see, you ever experienced that sort of thing? And then when you've experienced it, you say, oh, my goodness, Lord, I should have listened to you. I would have had less issues. Man who is rebellious has a way of sending you down a rabbit hole. A trusted family member or friend can send you down a path. And it doesn't feel bad at first until you start to see something. Uh-oh, I think I wasn't supposed to be over here. Why do we say, Lord, Lord, but yet we do not do what he tells us to do? Let us take a moment right now and confess that we were rebellious at different times in our lives. In this very moment, possibly, right? And we don't recognize it. And we're asking Lord Jesus for your help, for your assistance. We need you right now. We can't live this world. We can't live this life without you. And please forgive us for being rebellious, for not listening, for doing things that we weren't supposed to do. And Lord Jesus, move on us. Give us the courage. Give us the motivation to turn from our wicked ways so that we can continue to grow in the knowledge of you and so that we can be where you are after this life. In Jesus' name. We got the deliverance ministers out there who will cast out those demons, some of you all, because some of it is just demonic. It's straight up demonic. Matter of fact, the demons was probably talking to some folks as they were listening to this message. You got things to do. Turn that off. You know, oh, I didn't like what she said that last message. I don't like what she said this message. Go. Ugh. You see, rebellion don't want you listening to wisdom. Rebellion wants to keep you bound. And I told you on this channel, I am not in support of keeping people op oppressed. I'm not in support of keeping people blind. I'm not in support of keeping people held in mental or physical captivity. Mm -mm. First Samuel 12, 14 and 15. Now, if you fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's commands, then both you and your king will show, which, show that you recognize the Lord as your God. But if you rebel, listen to this, and he hasn't changed. But if you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be as heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. Now it all makes sense why there's a long history of individuals in the family that just couldn't get a break. They would start out doing some really good things, but then bad things would happen. Why? Some of you all, that's an answer to your question now. Why? Because they rebelled. They said, Lord, Lord, and they didn't do what God wanted them to do. They said, Lord, Lord, and they went 
and they got out in the world and they sinned and then they came back to the Lord and people prayed for them and they went back out and they got caught up in a bunch of sin again and after a while God's hand became heavier and heavier to the point where God allowed Satan to come in and take them off this planet do you want to leave this world sooner rather than later I think not now for some you may want to leave this world sooner rather than later but you're not going where you think you're going to go and that's true the Lord showed me in the spirit said many listeners Many listeners are going to need to get right with him before they leave this earth. That I'm not the only one who recognizes my days or number, but some of you all, you recognize your days or number too. And that's all the more reason why you need to get your business straight. It's not just about a wheel and leaving money and assets and whatever and whatever else behind. But it is also about communication, about a personal relationship. With the one true God and the people of God. And asking forgiveness. And being apologetic. And doing the types of things that God wants you to do. Because we think a lot oftentimes because we're parents. Oh it's about them kids. Them kids need to come to me. And the Lord said oh no. There's many a parent that needs to go to their children. And say I'm sorry for not. Studying and showing myself approved unto the one true God. For not sitting down with you and praying with you and reading a word and showing you that God loves you and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Instead, I was tearing you down. Jesus. Ezekiel 20 verse 8 said, but they rebelled against me and would not listen. They did not get rid of the vile images they were obsessed with. Some people got vile images. It's not even about communicating or not communicating or having all sorts of issues with this one and that one. Uh Uh-uh. This is about the fact that you just got a whole bunch of vile images. You worshiping false gods. They did not get rid of the vile images they were obsessed with or forsake the idols of Egypt. This is what the Lord said. Then I threatened to pour out my fury on them to satisfy my anger while they were still in Egypt. And that's what's coming to some of these false god worshipers. Used to be about God's business. Used to pray. But not anymore. Mm -mm. They got all these false gods. And there is a hell to pay. You got to let go. Because rebellion grieves the spirit. Isaiah 63.10 says, But they rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and fought against them. You got people who they don't mind. Hardening their hearts. Hebrews 3.15, remember what it says today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Your heart is hardened when you don't receive truth. Your heart is hardened when you want to go out into the world, do what the world wants you to do. And then when a counselor or teacher or, or somebody comes along and they're saying, I love you and I want what's best for you. And then you say, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you and all this other stuff. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? People, people who know that they are wrong, they have a way of saying, well, God don't care. Oh, God don't care. Mm. Malachi 2.17 says, you have wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him, you ask, by saying all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord and he is pleased with them? Or where is the God of justice? He's heard all of that. Telling me, you know, Enterprise 7 talking about, oh, you know, he don't care about me. And, you know, I mean, where is this just God and all that? That's just speaking out into the wind. It's speaking out into the air. I'm not going there with you. Instead, you've got to know God for yourself. He don't want to hear anything else about your personal opinion about who he is. All he wants you to do is have some mustard seed faith and believe in him. Trust in him and stop believing in the liars. And stop wallowing in your sin. And stop having a pity party for yourself. 
Job, Job was talking to the Lord. He was close to the Lord, yet far away. God heard everything he was saying, but yet God was still God. At the end of the day, he heard everything already. It didn't make us closer to the one true God by just running our mouths about everything we don't like about him. If anything, all it did was make him weary of us. So no, don't do that. Lord Jesus. And so I leave you with this. This this particular scripture is where we are right now. Right now. In the season that we're in, we're seeing it around us is what I mean. Okay, we're seeing it around us. Second Timothy 4, 3 and 4 says, For the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves. Right? YouTube hopping. <laughs> YouTube church hopping. Multiple teachers for yourself, right? But according to their own desires, right, for the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear something new. Not that you're church hopping, some some individuals, maybe not you, but some individuals, they're not church YouTube hopping or, you know, teacher hopping or anything else because they want to grow. They're doing all of this because uh, I just want to hear something new today. Hmm, that's it. Scripture says they will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. So they got the truth. They ran away from the truth. They got these itching ears to want to hear anything that's just new. And then when they realize this stuff isn't working that they're listening to, now you want to come back to your roots. May have had a falling out over an audio years ago. And then God brings you right back around to NM Enterprise 7. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Well, I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. May God richly bless you as well as those that you love. May you stay out of the gates of hell and that you will walk with this one true God who loves us so much and he wants what's best for us and that you you will accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior if you haven't already I'm just trusting and believing that there will be those who will be saved before we check out of here to God be the glory Please do check the description box for anything that is of interest. You've been listening to YouTube, Enum Enterprise 7. Blessings to you.